Well, the thing with real estate is that it keeps on growing in value as we become more creative with it. And here's a little tip to everybody here. The city of Burnaby in the Lower Mainland is one of the wealthiest municipalities in North America. In fact, they're so wealthy, they have their own bank. They don't fundraise from external sources, they borrow from themselves. And so they're able to do all these things. And so the idea with today is we will be as wealthy and as creative as the city of Burnaby, raising our own funds so we can get our own deals going. So let's get the day started. By a show of hands, who is here on how to level up on raising funds for their business? By a show of hands. If you're here for that, then you're in the right place. If you're not here to grow your business, learn how to invest in real estate, or gain financial freedom, you might be in the wrong Zoom room. So no hard feelings. Want to make sure that everybody here who is supposed to be here and wants to grow in that direction. Now, we will get the show on the road. One of the things I love about what we do as real estate investors and myself as a trainer with Trust Your Talent is that we have a direct hand in helping shape and change the lives of others. I mean, who here works in corporate? By show of hands, who here worked in a big corporation where they're a number? Yeah. Keep your hands up. Have you ever looked your clients in the eyes? Do you? Or are you behind the scenes? If you do, great. Here's another one. Keep your hands up if you know the work you do changes their lives. Yeah? I know I do as a real estate investor and as a trainer with TYT. The actions that I get to take provides families homes, provides individuals security, provides the students that we get to train a different path to redefine their future so that they get to live on their own terms. Whether that's pay, eventually being able to pay for their kids going to university, being able to go on that vacation every year, by the way, or being comfortable knowing that they will get to retire, retire without fear of money running out. So that's what we get to do here at TYT. That's what I get to do here and how I've created my business as a real estate investor. Now, my lawyer had me put this in here because I am not a lawyer. So they drafted this up. And it's a bunch of stuff saying, hey, this is for educational purposes. We are here sharing. I'm here sharing my experiences and what has set me up for success. However, for you as an individual investor, budding mid-career at the end and wanting to take it at the next level, it's good to have a conversation and have, have a plan specifically structured for you. Thumbs up if we're all good with that. Yeah? Awesome. Now, the other thing I'm not is a financial planner, an accountant, a tax advisor, 
and you already know a lawyer. I'm sure it would have made my Asian mom super happy if I were one of these. However, I'm pretty sure she doesn't get to complain every time I visit her because I have so much availability to not only live my life, also enjoy spending time with her. And we work with licensed people, licensed power team members. And we did have a basic seminar on how to build a power team. Stay tuned. Uh, make sure you are part of the talented group on Facebook or uh, make sure you're getting the, the emails from us so that you can know next when the next uh, basic seminar is for what you're looking for to take you to the next level. And of course, we're also in Eventbrite and I'll be sharing that link shortly. First things off, let's take a minute to clear our mind because a lot of us here have day J-O-Bs. What does J-O-B stand for? It stands for Joseph. Just over broke. Oh, over Diane broke. beat us too, and she is on the game. Diane, thank you. Just over broke. So a lot of us are have a lot of things coming on from that. So let's take a 30 second here and write it all down, clear our mind, get it off our plates. So we are clear to receive, internalize how to raise funds for our businesses, your business. Okay, we are back. Everybody should have some, have had a clear mind, wrote everything off and are good to go. And that song, by the way, is one of the most influential, passionate, and inspirational songs I know. Uh, I was just in Buenos Aires in Argentina, and boy, do people really express themselves with that music. Now, how about we learn to express ourselves? Now, when, when we are young, when we're first uh, new to being adulthood, I know for me in my 20s, it was all about me. It was survival. Uh, like when I was in a, working in Joseph's neighborhood as a lifeguard, there wasn't room to give. However, as we grow, in our career, as we grow in skill, what I found is that life gets lonely. There's not a lot of people to hang out with. There's not a lot of people to spend time. I mean, who here can take a three hour lunch on, on a Wednesday? Right. So these people that put their hands up are either students or trainers with Trust Your Talent. And why does that matter? It's what inspires uh, our mission here, which is creating financial independence one person at a time. Or my interpretation of that is having bubble tea in the middle of the day. Not a lot of people can do that. And so that is why I am here as a trainer. It is to create that group of people that I can call my family, my friends, that can have the time, that can make the, the location happen, that are not tied down to their desk. Because for me, that's, that's financial freedom the ability to define who I get to spend time with, where I get to spend my time, and how much of that time I get to spend. And really, if you've ever had good bubble tea, it takes a couple hours to get it done. 
especially with a good group of friends. Now, our seminar is going to go through by getting to know who, where are you now in your real estate journey? Where is your investment going? And then we're going to be learning how to leverage education in real estate investing to raise, raise funds. Because too often, a lot of new investors are bent, focused on doing it on their own. Because that's how school works. Everybody has to take the test by themselves, head down with only one pencil. However, have you ever noticed the wealthy doing everything on their own? No. They do it in teams. They have specialists from all areas supporting them. And that's how they have the bandwidth. That's how they have the skill set to take it to the next level by having smart people supporting them. So when we look around at the people bent on doing it on their own and they're wondering why, why are they not getting ahead? Why is it taking so long? It's because they are making every single mistake, every single learning on their own instead of leveraging the learnings of others. Okay. And I'd like to find out why you're here. Why real estate investing? How come you're not looking at stocks? How come you're not into crypto? Why are you not in Vegas with a pile of thousands in, the, in your fist at the craps table? There's lots of ways to make money. Why real estate investing? Okay. And then I will open it up for questions and share what are the next steps. If this sounds good to you, by a show of hands, can I get agreement here? Let's see if we're all there. Perfect. Thank you, Audrey. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Cara. Welcome. Eric, you still there? No, I think Eric's driving. Uh, Joe, appreciate the horn. Now, it's important to understand what's the difference between educated, trusted, and a professional investor. Okay? There's a difference. Let's agree there's a lot of very smart people. Yes? I know when I went to university, I went to a school called UBC. Anybody know, here knows where UBC is? Yeah? It's this giant campus on the edge of the mainland of Canada where it's 30,000 people. 30,000 people, it's 30,000 of the smartest people from across the world focused on expanding, pushing the limits of human knowledge. Now, traditional thinking says, wow, these are, people are so smart. They've got to be millionaires, billionaires. I got to share here. Some of these people, especially my professors anyway, they were wearing jackets from the 1970s they bought from Japan when Japan was a poor country. These people were surviving off of subsidies from the university because they were focused on knowledge, not taking action. And there's a difference. Education without action doesn't create results. 
those people become walking, talking libraries. A professional investor takes, seeks out knowledge and seeks to apply it. Applied knowledge creates results. And that's what we here at TYT are doing. That's because we're here as professional investors, creating new professional investors so that we can change lives of others. Now, what's an invest in educated investor's process? Starts with a goal. And then, who here knows what S means? S-M-P-S. -S. It stands for, Joseph? Oh, you got to unmute yourself, buddy. Strategy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Justin, what does M stand for? Market S&P. M stands for market. Thank I appreciate it, Justin. And what does P stand for? Nina? I think Nina might be tied up. It stands for property. Strategy, market, property. Now, most uneducated investors would fall in love with the property first and then fudge the numbers to make the market work. And finally, figure out a strategy that may or may not work for that market or property. What does that spell? Well, it spells PMS. And PMS can be uncomfortable. Just like starting real estate investing, property focused. And that's the difference between an educated professional investor and somebody that's a property collector. Do note the difference. And all of us here have three buckets of income. Now, why? A lot of you are looking at me right now saying, well, Ray, if you're a professional real estate investor, that means you should have money. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got money. Well, then why are you doing this, Ray? Why are you at 5.52 p.m. in Edmonton on the camera? Well, it's because I have three sources of income. Portfolio, earned, and passive. Okay. This is me earning. And let's all agree, if you love doing something, is it okay? Is it okay to be compensated for it? By a show of hands. If you love doing something, is it okay to be compensated for it? Yeah, absolutely. Right? And here's the thing, everyone. If I weren't doing this, I'd be sitting in short somewhere in the sun, frying. So it's actually quite healthy for me to be here, being with you all. The other one is passive, where we sit there and our investments pay us, or our deals pay us. And of course, portfolio, where it's the paper, the contracts, the stocks that make the money. And professional, educated investors have all three at all times going. to get financial freedom, financial independence, and the ability to have choices in their lives. No better choice than deciding who gets to be your boss. We, let's be clear, we all have a boss. If you're married, 
you want to look left or right, it's the person beside you that's going to be the boss. If you have kids, look down. That's your boss right there, especially if you have newborns. As we have friends who have newborns right now, they get to, their boss gets to dictate when they sleep, when they eat, and if they get to go to the bathroom at all. And of course, lifestyle. Now, everybody here in Canada? Yeah, by a show of hands, who's here in Canada right now? Yes, yes, yes. Who likes being in Canada in January? Keep your hand up if you like being in Canada in January. Really, Audrey? You like being in Canada in January? Yep, I yeah. like I like the cold. You like the cold. All right. Where in Canada are you, Audrey? Mississauga. It's not that cold, Audrey. Let me tell you what's cold. That's why I prefer going further north if I could. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So there you go, Audrey. There's always somewhere else, somewhere better. My assumption was most people would want to head warmer. However, you're a new one, Audrey. Thank you for, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and so with having three buckets of income, we get to decide where we are at any given time. I like to spend my Januaries and Februaries somewhere hot, maintaining my tan. So everybody knows I'm still Filipino. Otherwise, I just change ethnicities. And then my parents and family don't recognize me. And that's uncomfortable. So where would you rather be? And how are you going to make it happen in terms of funding it, in terms of making sure you have the time? And for those of you who want to take it to the next level, in terms of making sure you can take others with you on the journey. Now, who here has ever wondered how they can get what they want? One of my mentors, V. Zig Ziglar, said, you can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. And never have truer words been spoken because when we live in abundance, when we focus on creating value, the law of reciprocity brings value back to us. Now, speaking of creating value, who here, by a show of hands, has ever purchased a used vehicle? Okay. Were you comfortable there? Were you relaxed? Or did you have your guard up? Did you avoid eye contact? Did the person in the showroom, even though they only had a suit, look like they had weapons and they were approaching you? The way things and stress instantly rose. Yeah? Do you remember? Or who here dodges the sales guy every time they walk into Best Buy? Yeah. Yeah. You do. You know why that is? It's a learned reaction. It's because we don't want other people to make decisions for us. We want to have the option to make decisions. I like options. Do you? Yeah, I like options. And so if you do not like being sold to, why is it that when most, a lot, of new investors, not professional investors, 
whenever they're presenting a deal, they are aggressively pushing and selling their deal. Does everybody here by a show of hands remember the, the golden rule? Treat others as you would like to be treated? Yes, yes, the golden rule. Then why? Why be so aggressive about pushing a deal? Often it's because you don't know any better. This is the way it has been modeled for you. This is the way you have seen it. I mean, if the only kind of sales sharing, presenting you have seen is aggressive pushing, there's no other model. Yes or no? Yeah. What if... I can share with you another way. What if there was a better way? What if there was an age old tradition predating written records that human beings have leveraged to share and influence and pass on through the ages? By a show of hands, would you be interested in that? All of you are looking at me like I'm going to give you software for this. Remember, the key word was before written language. There's no software for this. When you see this picture, do you feel a bit more relaxed? Does it remind you of good times? Does it help you lower your shoulders and just Lean back in your chair. It's because the difference between the two is one is a modern construct. Whoopsies. And that one is as old as time. And usually what happens around fireplaces like that is we share stories. Every one of us have been told stories from when we were old enough to understand and sometimes not even old enough to understand what was going on in life. What was happening? Okay. And because of that, we are wired as the human animal that we are for stories. If I'm not sure who here is religious, and regardless of the religion you adhere to, when we look at the way the religion is taught, it's taught in story format, and the lessons are in the stories. And here today, I'm going to be sharing the recipe for you to leverage stories to make sure your message gets through. The message of value. The message of security. The message of trustworthiness. All of which, once you're able to communicate it, makes you a better candidate to partner with, a better person to park money in, which means you will now have the food that your business needs to grow. Sounds like a plan? Yes? So now let's quickly check in while we are here. I would like to know where your business is now. Okay, so I'm going to put up a quick poll and let's get everybody in on where they are in their real estate investing journey. Let's take 30 seconds to get in there. 
and there we are. So we, a lot of us here are at the beginning stage of our real estate journey. Some of us have a few properties and it looks like a couple of us here are already off to the races, not running quite full sprint, not running at their most efficient. However, better than a walk. So this is definitely something for us here in the room that's going to take us and add value for where we are and where we want to go and take us to the next level. Now, in storytelling, often people talk about, in presentations, before storytelling, uh, in presentations, they do logic first and then share the emotion of what's going on to instigate and push a decision. Now, Ray, you're looking at me, Ray, what does this mean? What does this look like? I don't know what you're talking about. Look at a presentation or an ad, any ad. Often ads, how they'll start is they'll list all the features. It's good because it's the fastest, it's the newest, it's the strongest, on and on and on and on. And then they'll tell you, hey, it's good for you. And then they'll tell you, you should get it. That's how ads, sales usually go too. Just like when you show up at a used car dealership. They'll tell you first that this thing goes zero to a hundred kilometers per hour in 4.5 seconds. It's got a V8 engine. And by the way, it is so good on gas. Isn't that something that you would love? You should get it now. That's usually how this goes. However, our brain works very much differently, backwards. How our brain would have loved that presentation to go is, let's see here, Kevin, you're gonna love this car. This car is gonna make you feel exhilarated. It's going to get you from the darkness of your house to the sunny beaches of Stanley Park, where you can feel the breeze against your cheek, where you can hear the sound of the waves lapping on the shore. And by the way, Kevin, by the way, this car is fuel efficient. So it's going to save you money on gas, that $2 gas that's often found in Vancouver. Kevin, you told me you love the beach. You told me you long for freedom. And you told me that you wanted a car that respected your budget and the environment. What's holding you back? Now's the time. Now let's take a pause. Didn't that feel different? Who would take, by a show of hands, who would take logic, emotions, and decision presentation style? Or who would take emotions, logic, and then getting a decision presentation style? By a show of hands. Option A, put up your hand right now. Hold on. Option A. Option B, put up your hand right now. Let's see it by show of hands. Yeah. And as I've just shared before, it's because our brains are wired that way. It felt smoother. It felt more comfortable. It felt right. Because our brain makes decisions quickest on emotions. 
And appealing to the emotions first means it gets part the logic part of the brain, which is actually a guardian. A guardian. Appealing to logic right off the bat often gets you and your deal and your proposal stuck. Because then we're asking the brain, hey brain, I want you to calculate this. Hey brain, is this really true? We should research about this. Hey brain, this sounds kind of funny. Maybe we should look at A, B, C, D, E option. Sounds familiar? There's a lot of people here with glasses, so I'm gonna say yes, that sounds familiar. Typically, if you've got a lot of glasses, we're very good at the number crunching and the analysis and the research. And yet, it is the emotional part of the brain that makes decisions in the end. So let's appeal to it. By a show of hands, does that sound good to you? Yes, yes. Now, when we are sharing a story, the target is to create emotion. And really, when was the last time any of us here cared about, on an emotional level, a number? Like, really, a number. The number 184, for example. Does that make you cry? Does that make your heart swell? Does that get you out of bed in the morning screaming for joy? The number 184. No, it's a number. And yet a lot of presentations, pushing deals starts with that sort of tactic. How about focusing on the emotion and creating a character? Someone, our potential investor, can care, fall in love, and connect to. For example, what if I shared with you that I have an opportunity, Dave? And Dave, that opportunity is a property in St. John, New Brunswick. Now, this property is actually owned by Lewis. Lewis Lee is his name. Lewis Lee is a retiree. And he spent his whole life putting up his life, putting up his family, his friends, building it up with his own bare hands. However, as we all know, Dave, uh, Dave the economy has turned. Interest rates are grinding at Lewis's fixed income. It's hard for somebody like him that has served our country, served his community, to live, to live in dignity. So Dave, what I'm proposing here is a plan to have Lewis ride off in the sunset and help you have your money work harder so that you too can help Diane over there. Because Diane looks like she likes nicer things in life. I mean, Dave, how would you feel if you helped somebody who's built this country live in dignity for the rest of their lives and also have Diane walk in, into any store and be unstoppable by your current budget. Dave, that's the opportunity here. That's the possibility of what you and I are gonna be working on together. And pause. How'd that feel, Dave? Stressed you out? Did you, your shoulders rise up? No, it didn't stress me out. Just uh, exciting, intrigued, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
And Dave, was any of what I just shared with you in the way I shared it brand new? I basically described what I was doing in the previous two pages. In the last yeah. 15, 20 minutes, I shared what I was doing. That's the magic of what we're doing here in storytelling. That's the ability of not focusing on the numbers, focusing on the emotion and what separates us as human beings from AI robots. And that's why, Dave, if you know how to master this skill and take it to the next level, you will be able to beat every single other investor out there hucking a spreadsheet because there's no connection in that. There's no human element. And it invites more analysis, more thinking, and less action. Now, when we say caring and emotion, it's got to be something real. Real emotions are either felt by you, the storyteller, or the character in the story. Joy, sadness, pride, loss, fear. In our story, who do you think was the main character? It's okay to guess. Who was the, the character in the story? That's going to make the big decisions. Was the character Lewis? The character is you, Dave. Oh, it's me. Yeah. You are the one, the main character in the story that I created that gets to make the big decision. Remember, I was asking you, are we going to honor Lewis, Lewis and, his, and let him live a life of dignity? You get to make the decision. And I inserted, I gave a room for you in the story. So you're the main character. So it's easier for you to feel what it's like, the weight of the decision, the joy of helping Lewis out. Okay. And let's all be clear, oops, what a story is not a timeline, or a resume. Too often when companies, organizations, people start off their presentation, it's like, look at me, it's all about me. Look at all the things I did back in 1988. And yes, 1988 may have been a, a great banner year. However, the person that's sitting across the table, wanting to get to know you, wants to get to know you, 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 as a person first. That you're not a robot. That you're trustworthy. That you have human emotions. That you're passionate and you care about what you do and why you do it. Because otherwise, they can just read your presentation in an email, emailed PDF. This is the difference between an educated real estate investor and an uneducated new investor spamming anyone and everyone with an email address and wondering why no one is investing in their great deal. They're not adding value. They're not creating connection. Connection is the name of the game. Yes, there are numbers. Yes, there's deal structure. And it's relationships and connection. Okay. Any questions so far about where we are, what you've learned, where we're headed? Where are we going to go next? Awesome.
Now, the crucial components to weave into your story is why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you here? Why did you take time out of your precious day away from your precious family to sit here across the table from me? What's driving you? What's your why? How will I know that when things get tough, you are going to be there go, chugging along? Did you know Brian Chesky, the founder, the founder of Airbnb, when he went to raise money from venture capitalists, a lot of them said no. A lot of them, a lot of people told him no. Because really think about it. Why would people let strangers live and sleep in their own home? Kevin, would you let somebody sleep in your home next to your kids? You haven't met them? Yeah, doesn't it sound crazy? Good words. However, Brian Chesky is a storyteller. And he stole, he said, he shared the story of how passionate he is and what he did, what he sold, how he, he was so creative to fund Airbnb up to this point. And it was on the verge of bankruptcy. And then he got his millions because he communicated through his story that he'll do whatever it takes, even though the, his business idea of letting strangers sleep in, the, in his own home sounds crazy. And Airbnb is what it is today. What's your vision? How are you going to do it? What strategies? Are you going to leverage? And it's important here to share what strategies, especially given what's happening in the market right now. There's a lot of people who entered real estate investing with one strategy. The strategy, or really the non-strategy, of buying and praying that the market will still keep going up, that interest rates will stay low. So what's your vision for building a portfolio? How will you protect me? How do I know you are creative and you have my back and you are trustworthy? And what's your USP? Unique selling proposition. And let me unpack that. Really what USP means is why, uh, why Joseph? How is Joseph different from Kevin? How is Joseph different from Lewis? How is Joseph different from Diane? Other than the hairstyle, we get it. Diane likes the hair long and Joseph likes the hair short. However, what else is different? What's the different character? What's the different experience? What is the difference that has me align and trust and know Joseph as somebody that I can leave with my kids' college fund, my daughter's wedding money, the piggy bank, for my cottage, for my grandkids. And of course, share in your story, what have you done to be taken seriously and considered trustworthy? Have you leveraged other people's experiences? Have you gotten yourself educated? Do you have a mentor 
somebody who's been there before you and can guide you along the way on your journey so you can leverage what they've done in the past and jump even higher and faster? Or have you watched a YouTube video or two? Have you read three books on the subject? Have you just taken a six hour course over the weekend? Who would you entrust your hard earned retirement savings with? Weekend course warrior or somebody with experience backing them and has education supporting them? So what are you going to do? Make sure you include these aspects in your, your, your story. Because what we're communicating here is experience, is support, is level of commitment. It's self-knowledge and somebody that knows and aligns and cares about what I, as a money partner or as a JV active managing partner, can cross with. Who would you partner with? Be aware when constructing your story or sprinkling these stories across the way. And now you're all wondering, where do we share these stories? Well, where would you share these stories? Anybody here, by a show of hands, anybody here know of something called the elevator pitch? By a show of hands, who knows about the, the term elevator pitch? Nobody? Nobody's heard of it before? Okay. So there we go. Kara, I appreciate you sharing. I believe Lewis put his hands up. Great. Elevator pitch was this something that was touted back in business circles about if you were stuck with somebody in an elevator, how are you going to communicate what you do, what you, why you do it in less than a minute? Because that's about the time for an elevator ride. Yeah? Yeah. However, what if somebody talk to you really quickly like, hi, my name is Ray Salazar, I'm a real estate investor and I'm here to share about my deal and my deal is gonna make you a lot of money, it's gonna make you 12% actually and that's gonna be more than that I can give you. If somebody spoke like that to you, you've never met them before in your life, are you gonna to wanna to have a second meeting with them? By a show of hands, do you want a second meeting with them? Do you feel relaxed listening to that? By a show of hands, oh. If anything, that drives up the stress level. And for the longest time in business circles, that was the way to create an initial first impression. The elevator pitch. Describe you and your business in a minute or less, in one paragraph, in four sentences. However, it doesn't communicate anything. Because really, your intended audience will tune you out. You come across as brash, you come across as unintentional, and you come across as manic and desperate. Whereas if you take the time to tell a story, share your story, you get past the logic. You get into the emotion and earn the right for that second meeting because you've actually created a genuine connection. Who here 
wants to create a genuine connection by a show of hands. Yeah, yeah. Long-term business partnerships are based on genuine connection, especially for real estate investors. These are big sums, big sums. However, you know what's even better? Turning those big sums to even bigger amounts. Because it's not the cost of money, it's the availability of it. It's not the cost of money. Actually, if you've got a pen, write this down. Pen or pencil, write this down. It's not the cost of money, it's the availability of it. And leveraging that initial seed funding to do more, leveraging knowledge, well, then that's a win-win. You are creating something better because you know better and you didn't have the funds in the first place. You're creating something better by helping somebody with money that didn't know what to do with it. That's a win-win. And of course, that first deal breeds even more deals, even more deals. Okay. Now we're gonna get into another poll here. How much have you invested in yourself? Let's take another 30 seconds to make sure we have the time to think about where, where am I? Where are my investments? What kind of person am I prioritizing? There. And if you're wondering what that song is, it's Four Seasons uh, Winter by Vivaldi. And if you're all looking at me like, wow, Ray's really a classical kind of guy. I actually learned it from a show on Netflix called Chef's Table. More of a foodie than a classical guy. The more you know. <laughs> so it looks like a lot of us here are still, a lot of you here, are still at the beginning of your journey. As in, there's a few people here, few, few of the attendees still looking at YouTube to be the source of their wealth or looking at uh, Amazon books to fill in all the gaps. Remember, when you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. And if you're investing in yourself, the results are the results are the results. Often harsh, always fair. Now, remember that an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. Look, I got myself here following, initially following, the advice of the people that came before me that said, get an education at UBC. Be smart get good grades. However, that system is designed to create great people that work at JOBs. And if you want to look at what your future is like, look at the future of the people that are giving you that advice. So be aware of who's, who's there and giving that advice and where you'll end up. Okay. And one of the smartest guys I know, one of my mentors, Mr. Buffett, and the guy running Microsoft or created Microsoft. What we do here or what I've done 
and a lot of my colleagues here at TYT have done is we're in it for the long haul. This is not a sprint. We're not here to do a quick run. We are here for a marathon. I'm here for a marathon. And real estate investment is not about a get rich quick scheme. If you're here to get rich quick, you're in the wrong room. However, if you're here to get rich for sure, and you're coachable, you're in the right place. You're in the right place if you're coachable. So what are the next steps you're wondering? Well, 2023 is the year. Now is the time to start. Book yourself a coaching call. If you've got a smartphone, now's the time to get it up, turn it on, put it on the camera mode, and scan the QR code. Scan the QR code and get yourself booked with one of EYT strategy coaches. That way you can get more custom, customized, personalized, and of course, start the conversation on your specific situation on how to get started as a real estate investor and what your next direction is. So let's take 10 seconds to make sure you're there and go. Okay, at that point, you should all have it. And here are upcoming events. I'm going to share the event link right here in the chat. Bam! We here at TYT are active and everywhere across the country. We are international. Actually, we have training in Canada and the US, and our trainers here have investments coast to coast, regardless of its Canada, the US, Colombia, and the UK. Because if it makes money and it's legal, we are into it. Because a lot of us are too pretty to make it in the criminal system. So we keep it legal. The first one is Team Spotlights and Monthly Coffee Chat at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, and that's on May 13th. This is where you can ask our trainers what you're going through, what's happening in your business, what's happening in your market. This is an open discussion. So come prepared. Send us an email, your question to... support at trustyourtalent.ca and we'll include it in the coffee chat. Now, it is also an open forum, an open chat. So speak up, share what's going on in your business and your life, and we'll discuss it with our panel of professional real estate investors, trainers, and mentors. And that's on May 13th. Now, on May 20th to 21st, we have a live workshop in Edmonton. Round of applause. That means we are going to have our very own Stephen Chung, trainer and speaker with Trust Your Talent, leading a two-day intense workshop on real estate investing, where you are going to be in the room where it happens with our strategy coaches, where they will walk you through and share multiple strategies, including a more in-depth version of real estate investing and raising funds and lease options and more to make sure that in this changing situation that we have across the world, because really it doesn't matter if you're in Europe, if you're in Canada, you're in the US, you're in South America, things are changing. The environment 
is changing from even just eight months ago, the scenario is different. So wouldn't you prefer to have money work for you and have an exit strategy, regardless of the market's going up, down, or sideways? And that means having more tools in your tool belt. And of course, we here at TYT love getting together as a community, as a family. So we have TYT Connect live in Edmonton. So come out, connect, get to learn what other TYT students are doing and how they are thriving in their market and how they are leveraging the different strategies to be able to invest across provinces, across countries, and making sure that they are growing past inflation and taking their investors with them and, of course, securing the future of their family. And last, not least, we have, if you're online, a Level Up Bootcamp Online Live. And that's going to be on April 29th. That's April 29th, Online Live Bootcamp. Team has just shared the registration link for it. So get yourself going, get your year started, and invest in speeding up and getting yourself started. Or you could be like those other people looking at YouTube, watching and waiting for things to change. Now, beyond that, our two-day workshop in Edmonton, it's going to be 16 hours, which means one day equals eight hours. And this is two days of learning from multiple strategy coaches and Stephen, who's our, our trainer for boot camps and workshops. From 9 a.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. This is going to be live. It's not going to be online. So when you come out, make sure you have pen, paper, laptop, so you are geared and ready to go. And there are going to be hard strategies in there, the ones that's going to enable you to pivot in this changing real estate environment, including my uh, one of the, the strategies that I've started with, lease options, our baby strategy, and growing into distressed properties, wholesale and assignment, and multifamily. Because what smells like money? Distressed properties. And soft strategies, including creative financing, because the banks will eventually tell you no. How do you keep on growing so that you can keep funding your lifestyle, your business, and growth, and taking others with you? And asset income protection, because it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. Now, we want to make sure that when you join us, you have the leg up there and you get started. So we will be including contract templates because we want to, to get the ball rolling. And these are templates that we have spent hundreds, if not thousands on because lawyers <clears throat> have nice suits and expensive cars and they have it because they push really expensive paper. Learn by leveraging other people's knowledge and other people's time. Excuse me. And raising fund scripts. We will be sharing how you can speak to your potential investors, potential partners on what has worked for us here as trainers. Of course, you'll get copy of the course materials, past recordings, and scholarship opportunities and core courses. Now, you're thinking, Ray, I want to get started. 10,000 bucks. Well, we want you to get started too. So it's not going to be 10,000. 
it'll be 199.97 per person for in-person two-day workshop in Edmonton. That'll get you a seat at the right table instead of sitting on the sidelines as everybody else whizzes by and outgrows, outpaces the inflation rate that's eating away at their savings, their hard-earned nest egg. And bring a friend. I mean, I don't know if you'd call Diane a friend. She being nice today. Bring her for a hundred bucks more. We'll get her a seat. We'll get her get her a spot. Uh oh, not a good date for you, Diana. Well, ask again tomorrow. <laughs> See if you'll get added on. So scan. Take your phone. Scan and the QR code and get yourself registered now because there's no time like the present and tomorrow never comes. For those of you that have commitments and are unable to make it to the live event in Edmonton, we have an online boot camp, and this will be same thing, uh, eight hours. It is actually going to be on April 29th, and we will be covering the same things except online. Now it's going to be, you'd think, hey, nine grand, that's actually, whew. however, for you, because you're here and you showed up, $39.97, and the link is there to get yourself registered. Now, both of these events are limited seating. Both of these events are limited seating, limited spaces, because we want to make sure that we have enough coaches there to, to answer your questions and have the time to make sure that you get your questions answered, especially in the groups. Okay, so take action. Take action now. Think about what you were doing in 2022 and what did that get you? Do something different. If you want something new, a change, change what you've been doing, change it, take action. And of course, stay connected with us on Facebook in the Talented Investors Group. That's where we live online in Facebook and are sharing our wins, our successes, other live events and courses that are going on now. And at this point, any questions from anybody here? Any questions on raising funds, on what could be done differently, on the events that I've just shared? Kevin, everything good on your end? Joe, Joseph, everything good on your end? Dave, Diane? I think Diane's going to talk to you about what she's going to be doing in May and where her status is. Let's. <laughs> Lewis. Are there going to be any uh, live classes for the Vancouver conference? Funny enough, Joe, they're all live. Kind of like Toronto was all live. The courses are all going to be live in Toronto, uh, in Vancouver. And of course, you know, it's going to be at the Westin Bayshore. So close, quite close to Stanley Park. Are there any specific strategies you guys are uh, focusing on on that conference? We will be releasing that here in an email to all the students. So once that is released, then you can start getting yourself registered. Hey, Ray. Yes. Let's just double check. Um, 
two slides before it was level up boot camp. Is that the same as the boot camp we had? It is going to be a little bit different than the boot camp that you had. However, Kevin, because you've taken boot camp before, once you've gone to boot camp once, it's unlimited refreshers. So you can go get yourself registered into boot camp and refresh what it's like to be there and get the updated learnings as a, a TYT student and as someone who's taken boot camp before. So send an email to get yourself registered to support at trustyourtown.ca and we'll, we're going to make sure that you're in there. Cool? Thanks. Yeah. Very welcome, Thanks. Kevin. Any other answer and other questions I can provide clarity to or guidance? All right, then. That is a basic seminar for today, April 19th. I look forward to seeing all of you at boot camp on the 29th or live in person for workshop here in Edmonton. Have a good night, everyone.